What is the difference between this kid and other kids his age? Why is he getting so much attention in North America and Ghana, Africa? American leaders and African royalty all want to meet him. This American-born, Ghanaian amateur boxer is gaining the attention of boxing enthusiasts worldwide. Experts compare him to the next Floyd Mayweather Jr. He is a 14-time national champion. What's so special about Jojo? His father. Jojo is being mentored and coached by his father, a former professional boxer signed by the great Don King. His name, the African Assassin. Now, a generation later, Jojo is about to become a worldwide household name. He's calm, collective, intelligent, and gentle. But in the ring, it's a different story. That's why he's getting all this attention. A likable kid, a role model, and educated. Meet Jojo the Boxer. The reason I chose boxing was really because it was one of the first sports ever introduced to me. Uh, it was mainly between wrestling and boxing and, you know, at the age of five, I just wanted to try it a little bit more and I found a love for the sport. One time I was fighting, I was sparring in the gym and this guy hit me. When I went down and I came back up, I couldn't remember my name. So I have to sit down, they have to sit me down and wait and wait and wait before now my memories start coming back. So when your son tells you that thing, I want to be a boxer, you start questioning yourself. You say, did I want him to do it? Did I? You know, you start questioning yourself. But it reach a time when they start doing sparring and they start to keep on doing sparring, then after that I feel a little bit comfortable with that. I say, okay, you can do it. But I have to make sure that like him, like everybody that I train, I have to make sure that I protect them really good. From five to eight, it's just, that time was mainly just training. And at seven years old, eight years old, th those are probably my hardest times of my boxing career. When you train other people, it's, so, it's a little bit different. But my son is a, because I have to make sure that he go through inside that, a little bit, not a, not say pain, but uh, the work hard so he can stay on top all the time. So it was uh, much easier. When he started at the age of five, we trained three years straight. Sometimes I even feel like what am I doing this for? Like, why, why does this have meaning? And sometimes during that time, I'm like, like, he just wants me to do this so he could go and do something else. And this is, I really don't want to do it at all. So why is he, why am I running during this time for two, three hours when I feel like there's no value for it? But now growing up, I've now seen, seen the, the value that it has and the way it could change my boxing career. The same thing I trained my son when he was five years old, he's fighting the same way. But from the beginning, because of the amateur boxing, they always come crashing and keep on doing it. So it was hard for him to adjust. It was hard. But now, since he grew up, it's much easier for him. Down Now, most of the fighters, the amateur fighters, they have to catch up to him because he's doing the same thing he was doing when he was five years, when he was eight years old. It was, so from the beginning, my son used to lose fight. He used to live because he didn't know when they come after him, he keep on doing the same, the same thing that he's doing now. But now most of the amateur fighters, and I know that they have to catch up to him. That's why when we go to national, when we go to national, everybody say, oh, don't go and box with that kid, man. Don't go there and stay there and box with him. But one thing they don't know that my son can fight, especially the last national that we went to, the third run, I say, I know, but because they have a scorecard now that you watch, you can see that if your son is losing or is, is winning. You can see that if your boy is winning or losing. So the last one I told him, I said, man, go after him. And that's the thing he likes. 
you want to go after people. But I always put the skills first before all, I, I know all those things will come later on, but I always put the skills. The skills have to be, because it, always the skills always pay the bills. If you have skills, you can fight for a long time. Look at Floyd May, what I still doing it to now, because of the skills that their father teach him and keep on teaching him. Now he's still making it, say, if you want to fight today. Floyd May, what I can go to a, a, a fight today, and he's going to look the same way. At eight years old, I had my first fight, and a little bit down the journey, I did have, I also had my first nationals at eight years old. But from eight to 14, now I have nine national titles, including the Junior Olympics, uh, USA Nationals, Silver Gloves, and from that time, I've now been able to create the stand that I have now. When they start boxing, I used to tell people in Illinois that, hey, Joseph is going to win a lot of national. And they used to say, well, how do you know that? Because national is very, very difficult. Professional boxing, it's different. People feel like it's hard. But to fight, to go around the whole state to fight to be number one, it's not so easy. But I know because of what I went through with, as a boxer. Being a champion and having titles, it's, it's, it can, at times it could be fun to be able to see all the support, all the supporters, all the people that also want to become like you. But being a boxer and balancing education with it as well, it takes a lot of aspects from your life and even going out like I'll keep it real like many times I'm not going out to go have fun or doing those same things other people my age might experience but now I the reason that I do do this is for in the long run so that I have a life where I can enjoy <laughs> to Ghana because you know I'm a Ghanaian. I'm from Ghana and uh, though when I was uh, my young age I spent in a different country you know but uh, I have to bring him to Ghana because I see a lot of time that people who move from their country and they go to different country in the, in the end their kids don't go back to the country that their parents came from so but uh, I want him to see a different part of the world, to come to Africa, to see the kids over here, to see what they go through, how, how they go through in life in this place. So I brought, to have a different type of mindset. Because guess what? You can raise your kid and raise them and raise them and try to find a way to see. But if you raise a kid, and uh, for me, that's the way I think. If you raise a kid and you have a, two sides of the world to show him, show him and see what he can pick up from there. The crowd at the airport was just, it was mind blowing to me. It was amazing because it really showed how much support other people that I've seen before can get. And I've been able to experience that firsthand with so many people. Even when I first went, it was all the people running at me, like it was just a whole life changing experience. But I didn't expect a lot of people gonna come to the airport. I was, I was, you know, we are inside, and then his grandma came to us and said, "Do you know how many people are outside?" But we didn't care about. It. I said, "Maybe she just talking because maybe she's old." So when she see, she see five people, she think it's ten. I went back inside. I came out. And I even feel I felt like going back in because it was just overwhelming, and it just made me so happy. So when we came outside the fire town and she, we saw those people, Joseph, they took Joseph back inside. And then the second time, they said, okay, now we try to, I think the police people or the soldiers people came over there. And then 
they make that place so nice so we can come. When we went outside, Joseph said, Daddy, let's go back inside. I said, no, man, I don't care, man. You better face these people now, man. You can go in back inside. You better face them. So he stand right there, and I was very, very proud of him. My son doing good in what he is doing now. I have to find a way that the way I said before, I have to connect him. But Ashama can mean a lot to me because guess what? He's the king over there. He knows exactly what is going on and everything. <laughs> Being able to go to a shaman where my father grew up from and I was able to see all the things that he experienced and the life that he lived. To view where he made it from to be with Don King and to go to America and it's, it might have been a, it, it was a hard experience for him but for me to learn that and to see a different aspect of life, it, it was really good for me. And also to see the the a shaman chief to be able to have such a high figure in a shaman be able to come and meet me and to for me and him to communicate is also a great thing for me to view. We the I want you to focus on his boss career. Want to become the second Mayweather in America. Where Mayweather has reached, I want Joseph to go higher and higher, like Mayweather, so that he can come back and establish boxing gym for other youth to emulate from him. So this morning, I am here as the chief of a shaman. Wish Joseph well. Wherever he goes in the whole world, to assure him that a shaman is behind him. 100%. So I remember I told him, I said, look, I'm in U.S. now. We're doing good over there. We're going to, we have our gym going on. We're going to create our own gym over there. But I, I need a gym also in Ashama. So don't worry about it. I'll, whatever you need, I'll give to you. And he said, I'll give you a land. And then when, after he said, I'll give you a land, and I said, okay. I, I was very, very happy about it. And then after that, he said, then we went to the mayor, started talking to the mayor. The mayor from uh, Ashama said, you don't need to, I can raise the money for you to put that gym together. You don't have to worry about you coming up with your own pocket. And I said, no. And I told him, I said, we can do it also. I said, I can do it. I can have people that who can come together and get it. I said, no, don't worry. I'll raise the money for you to build that gym. Because guess what? If you just have come to Ghana, a training in the gym, a shaman, the training, have a chance to, he can share that brightness to other kids also. And also he can learn from those community kids over there. He can learn from them also. 
the assembly is also going to come up with uh, a strategic support in terms of space, in terms of uh, logistics, so that uh, those of us here, especially the young ones over here, can also pick it up and then uh, go the, the way he has gone. Uh, it is great. It's great getting him here this morning. Uh, I have mentioned to him that in Ashaman we should have uh, a boxing gym so that he can become an icon that people will be looking at. And uh, I'm sure Ashaman being a very youthful community, we are going to produce the, many of the likes of Joseph Jr. Seeing the mayor of Ashaman, I felt that was able to bring many things into discussion to start many things to happen in the shaman to be able to make a gym, be able to help back, uh, to give back to the community as well. Clean the sorrows of Sihara Kadadama, Sanaya, and Fiona Gayaru, Yarn Okumizo Tashi, Zemomotung, Yena Wangaraka, Shashik Mazoni, Yagama de Kai. Now the National Chief Imam is blessing him, putting all the needed blessings on the young boxer. May Allah accept our prayers. Amen. The prayer, it's, it's more like a blessing to have such a high figure, uh, how everyone views him is. He's a very high being that many people see, and to be able to meet with him, it's just, it's mind-blowing as well, because it's a big change for me, because in America, you don't experience that many things. People giving you their blessings, praying for you. It's being able to come to Ghana and experience so many things. It's just a whole different way of life. My dad went to school with my brother, you know, my, my brother. I remember I used to go and rent bicycle from him. I would go and ride bicycle. He had bikes, so you go and pay him some money, then he would let you drive the bicycle in the town. I used to take I used to go and take bike. I used to go and rent a bike for the whole day. And then I'll come home and then my brother would get upset with me. Why you give you keep on giving this guy this money? I'm in the same classroom with you and you keep on spending money. You come and take money and go and give to this guy. So when I found out Majara, Majara was, was he was in an oil business and he's doing really good. He have a different type of mindset. That's why he made it now. And but I'm very, very happy about what he's doing. Especially when he saw my son. And I went to him, I'm talking to him. That's the first time. I used to think my son don't have emotion. You know, most of other kids, they don't have that. I used to think when he, he gave my son a check for $10,000, my son, my, 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 my daughter said, oh, 10,000 city times. That's nice. Thank you. Joseph said, I say, and then I said, Joseph, it's $10,000. $10,000? 10000 he was there and I said, man, you have to say something, man. My son just broke in tears, start crying, man. The reason that I did cry during that time is the meaning, the way to see how much support a person that doesn't even know you that much, the belief that he has that you can become so, go so far in life. It's, it just, it surprises me so much that what I am doing has an impact and how much it impacts other people. The advice he gave me, it, it goes a long way because being able to see people that made it already to give back to others as well is amazing. You know, sometimes when you reach a time that uh, people emotion just, when they kick inside, you can't help it. Cindy, come. Cindy, come and see someone. <laughs> Yeah. 
I just saw Joseph, I spoke to his dad and uh, I saw a bit of his training session. Potentially, a very good one, good boxer. And I can't wait to see him to be a world champion. Of course, he's connected to Ghana, so we are all Ghanaians. Everybody will support him to, to go very, very fast, far as, as he can get. He's been one of those people that's been a day one that was always there for me. And during the press conference, I was able to meet with him, be able to talk with them. And I gave my one of my belts to him because he's an amazing person that has helped me so much. And I, I just felt like giving back and showing my, showing my gratitude for what he has done for me. So I put the bed on my ways, it makes me feel like uh, I've been in boxing before. <laughs> but I'm a businessman, right? Good. So that is what I really appreciate everything from Lady Jo. And uh, I think uh, we have to build a very good team around Lady Jo and guide him in whatever he need to become a world champion. Alaji is a godfather for Joseph. Alaji, Alaji don't want me to drive with Joseph to go a fight. He said, whatever you need when he's fighting, just fly so you can get him a rest time so he can go and fight. The father told me about the son who he's trading to become a boxer in future. Since he has been training a lot of boxers in uh, one way or the other, they are not up to the kind of discipline he wants a boxer to be. So I told him, Joe, you know what? You got a sense. So what we have to do now, let's leave everything let us concentrate on Larry Joe. I spoke to Alaji and I said, man, I'm tired of all these people that I'm training. And then Alaji told me that, don't worry about it, just train him. Just put focus on him, see how he's going to be. I don't know how my son is going to be, but Alaji, to Alaji to add extra talking to him, say, just keep an eye on him, he's going to be good. That thing makes me so happy about it. Meeting Azum Nelson was a big thing for me because he's a world-renowned boxer. Being able to hold uh, championships for so long and being able to meet him was a great thing for me because I was able to learn some stuff from his advice and to incorporate into my boxing style. And meeting him is just something not all boxers will get to view. So it's, I'm really happy that I was able to meet him. When you threw the punches, one, two, and the third one coming is the right, you don't have to take it, you know? You have to, you have to, you have to, you have to bob the punch, you have to bob the punch and go here, you know? You have to avoid it here and go here and come up. You know? But we work, we work on it later. Who don't know Azuma Nessie from Ghana? Everybody knows Azuma Nessie because when you watch uh, country like the U.S., though they have a, a lot of fighters before uh, Cassius Clay, they used to call him Cassius Clay, now they call him Muhammad Ali. But when he came out, he took boxing to a different level. When you look at uh, Mexico, 
when Chavez, there's a lot of fighters before Chavez, but when Chavez came, he took the boxing to a different level. And then Australia also, they have a guy over there, I forget his name, Azuma Nelson fought him twice. And then, but Azuma Nelson, for me, coming here, for my son to meet Azuma Nelson, forget about the boxing and all this thing, but the, the thing that he did, that's the thing that make me so happy for my son to have a chance to have one-on-one -on -one with Azuma Nelson by the ring. That make me feel like uh, King Kong. That make me proud. That make me feel like, you know, I'm doing something right for my son. That make me feel like uh, my son can conquer anything that he wants to conquer. Not just for boxing, just for that knowledge. When he's talking about him, about school and all those things, that means a lot to me. I met, I, I met Jojo. Uh, I've been talking to him uh, uh, and the father in America. And uh, the father was talking good about Jojo. We all want to see him. And today, Jojo is in Ghana here and he's training. Uh, we are here watching his training. And I believe what I'm saying, if we can continue, uh, we're going to have uh, 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 Olympic gold medalists in Ghana for the first time and uh, when he turned the professional he can he can be a world champion too because uh, you can get it if you really want it. If you continue to to fight then uh, we know that we, we don't have a champion here. to the north was to find my roots because my father also wanted me to see a different aspect of life the place that he's also been through the place that he has gone through and was able to make different ways of life for me to now see everything see the difference and through going to the north now our car also broke down which was a normal thing that happens to us in America, but breaking down in breaking down in the north, I I got scared a little bit, knowing that what will happen? Will a car hit us? Will something happen? It scared me a little bit, but going back on the ride, we were able to reach our destination. And something a little bit more about the temp uh, temperature, it was a pretty dry area. It it wasn't as hot as Bookham that I would say, but. It was pretty hot as well. I was able to even sleep in the sleep in the car at one point. And through going to the north now, I viewed how life is different from Accra and also from America. Some things that I can now think about every day when I'm training and to know that so many people are supporting me and also want me to be the best and so that I could come and help others to change others' life. The life in the North was very different from Accra, but some of the things in our journey that first happened was my mother didn't feel like it was needed for us to go, so this was kind of a last minute change. And her view on the North was pretty crazy, like there was witchcraft and all this stuff. It was just, it was just, I didn't feel like going after that, but my father and the Lodgy convinced us and we were down to go. Also, when I got there, 
I was able to meet my father, one of my father's sisters. That also showed us, uh, a show, uh, gave us a little get together when we got there. But the second day, being uh, being able to see all the the wide range of animals just walking around and walking around, and it was just different being able to see a cow, see the pigs, being able to see just even, what's it called, goats fighting, the little small goats fighting. It was just different, and it was right in front of me. It's, it's like I never experienced these things before, and I'm glad that I was able to come. yourself for his achievements. At the age of 14, if you've achieved so much, I mean, uh, it tells you how the future looks for you. But if you're at the age of 14, you already have won about 13 medals, national medals. Um, that, is a, that is a great uh, feat, and I want to congratulate you for that. Anybody associated with you and where you come from definitely will have this as a source of pride. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you for that. Um, I'm also happy that at the end of the day, yes, we have been born in uh, Sherman, but you always must have where your roots are. Of it's the most important thing. Traditionally, even we as friends, um, if you assume that you are living anywhere, mm -hmm, and then touch wood, anything happens to you, and you die. Even if they bury you anywhere, they will always take an item of yours and take it to your village and bury it there to suggest that you are supposed to be buried there. Because that is where your roots, yes, that's the roots. So anytime you do certain things, you must always find a way of getting back again into what they call it, into, the, into where you come from. schools that I visited in the Shaman was the secondary high school and being able to see the difference between schools in Ghana here and USA wasn't that big of a difference just the environment changed and I've seen that many of the adults that work there also care for all of the students that they they have and they want the best for them. Five to eight that was the time that I devoted mainly all of my time towards the sport and at eight I started my first fight where uh, I won my first fight and I also won fight of the night out of 20 different bouts. My main encouragement came from my parents. My mother was the one that helped me with my schoolwork and my father who was an ex-professional boxer, he helped me with my boxing. So both of them supported me to get to the spot where I am today to 18 now, uh, be able to finish my college be uh, between that time, and then I'll be done, I'll be able to become a physician's assistant, and then also go into my other works uh, to continue t uh, going into becoming a doctor. So by 20, I'll have that stuff done by 18, around that time. And then I want to become a professional boxer. So for boxing, after I retire from that, I'll also have another plan. If boxing does not make the money that I can retire off of for the rest of my life, then I can become a doctor as well and go into that position. I know, I know all of you guys have opportunities and are also aiming for goals, but we are all the same and we all should be taking those chances to better ourselves. So thank you. Seeing the school in the north as well, one of the schools run by my father's relative, my relative, it was a nice sight to behold to know that my family has also incorporated so much into the society. And that school 
all of the schools have brought me a lot of support and they all want to get to know me a little bit more, sending me messages. And it's been a fun experience. I've been doing some couple of sparring, but it's a hard sport. It's a hard sport. But I'll, if I was a boxer, I would be a pure boxer. I would be a fighter because fighters come for knockouts and then you want you to hit and then they hit you back and you know. Sometimes it's interesting. The fans want to watch it, but at the end of the day, your health is more important. And boxing is, you know, the sweet science. You, you hit, you don't, you don't get hit. If I hit you, you don't hit me. I win. So if I'm a boxer, I would have been a pure boxer. I move around, use my job. If the knockout comes, I take it. You no. Know? <laughs> I feel like I would cut my hand off. Thank you. Thank you. How long it took you to learn that? Yeah, practice makes perfect. Ever since coming to Ghana, I've seen the increase of food that I've been eating. So going to Oxford Street and drinking the coconut, also known as Kube, it was a fun experience because it, ta it tasted really good. And then I went to go eat fufu, banku, kenke, kokonte, uh, jollof rice. It's just, it's been a great experience and they all tasted good. Being able to eat the localized food and to experience something different than cheeseburgers and fries and just the normal USA food. Seeing Jojo eating fufu for the first time was very interesting because um, he has never he has never tried eating um, our local food, which is fufu before, and he wanted to try it for the first time. And then <laughs> the way he was eating it, trust me, <laughs> it was very funny. And then the meat, the meat on the um, um, fufu, jo Jojo tried it, and then he said the meat tasted like soap. <laughs> and uh, I, I started laughing, you know.
going to book them, it was a very different experience for me because for me, even I found Bookham very, it was a very hot area and seeing the boxers fight with no rings, not that good of equipment, it's, it's a very sad thing to see as well. So I'm very glad that I was even able to donate some equipment to them. How would it say they are? Mm, nine years old. Nine? I know. What weight is that? I don't know. Maybe huh? 50 pounds for the one. Not 50 pounds. Uh huh. Yeah, maybe 50 pounds. Oh, right now I don't know. I don't know yet. The, the one that's taller, the one that's taller looks like he's, huh? like he's not taking enough chances. The one that's taller. The thing that I've seen, the way they throw the punches, oh. the way they throw the punches is like slap. Slap, man? Eh? Yeah. 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 Seeing the ring made out of a stone that, for, uh, for chalk, it's just something that I haven't been through before. And being able to see that, it's, it's a very sad thing. When you go to the Bukum, you see the kids, the kids that train, they, they, they train harder. They train harder because they want to make a life for themselves. And you know, they, they, they have a future, but it's not easy. So you have to work hard. You have to work hard. And uh, um, I think this, got Jojo very sad and very emotional. Bukum is kind of like the heart of boxing in Ghana here. And even though it would have been, it's sad, this is their time to shine. This is their time to, it's something happy for them. All the audience came to see and it was, that was nice to see that so many people came to watch the little kids come and box. And for me, that was just a different experience that I've viewed in the first person. I was driving the family to um, the mall. We got stuck in traffic. And then, you know, here in Ghana, um, there are people, um, beggars, street beggars, that comes to your window, um, your car window to beg for money. To me, um, I find it um, normal. The family got very emotional and very sad because um, it, it, to them, I asked them why, and they said to them, it's not normal to see kids begging, kids um, five to um, 10 years old begging on the streets. Uh, and then um, the daddy reached out to his pocket, rolled down the glass, and started giving them a whole lot of money. I was even surprised, and I told him, um, wow, he should um, um, take his time. And he said, no, he can't, because he was very emotional. And I think that day he gave them all that he had. The people on the street, and yeah. there, there aren't many, and me hearing about how many cities people make per month compared to what people make in America, it's just been a real difference. And here the opportunities, they, it looks very slim, but some, I wonder myself, how do people survive in these conditions? And uh, one of the people with us, they said it's by magic. Somehow they're, they're all surviving, but I don't, I don't know how, I personally don't even know if I could do it. I feel like Ghana as itself should not be perceived as the, as the way that it has been perceived. It was a great journey and I really liked it. But coming here, I have seen that I found many different things that can help me as well.
seeing the other boxers, seeing their fighting style, seeing the ways that I can adapt to change as well here in a whole different country. And I've also seen a different way of life, seeing the hunger in people's eyes and seeing the way that they're able to live on a day-to-day -day basis. My name is Josefa Onongia. You can call me Jojo the Boxer. I'm 14 years old, and this is my story.